Howdy folks, you are joining us here live from Strange Loop, except we're not live because this is like two months later. <laughs> so we are talking to Dave and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, their names and pronouns. Hi, I'm Dave Yarwood, he, him. Awesome, awesome. What brought you to Strange Loop? So this is my fifth Strange Loop. It's my favorite conference to go to. My colleague Craig Andera recommended it to me in 2017. I was like, okay, Craig, I trust your judgment. Check it out. I was blown away. And then I had the pleasure of speaking at Strangely in 2019 about Alda, my music programming language. And then I was missing it in 2020, as was everybody else, unfortunately. Um, and then in 2021, I came back and did a workshop on Alda, which is also great fun. Awesome. So we share with us more about Alda. What is Alda? Sure. Yeah. So Alda I created about 10 years ago, 2012. It is a a text-based way of composing music. So it's an alternative to sheet music notation. You can write your, it's like a markup language for to express music. And it's a command line program that can play your text music. Okay, so that's really interesting. What is your background in music? I studied music in college. So I have a degree, bachelor's degree in music composition and bassoon performance. Oh, my little sister plays bassoon. Oh, no she's, way. She's, yeah, she's so musically talented in so many ways. And this maybe is what that's happened awesome. to you. That the band code just, just you you can play anything. Will you play bassoon? Like, sure, I'll play cool. bassoon. And then, you know, or or were you more intentional with your bassoon playing? Uh, no, it was. I was so in my high school band program. My it was a small program because my first my freshman year was the first year of the school, so there were very few students, and so the band director needed a lot of different instruments. So it was like, hey, Barry Sachs player, you're on bassoon now. I was <laughs> like, oh, okay, get some bassoonist now. Okay, so your background is doing a lot of like, horn instruments. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I've kind of played a variety of things. I did clarinet and then saxophone, then bassoon. Yeah, yeah. So you have this background in music composition and music theory. And when did programming and tech come into your life? And was it programming necessarily? Yeah, so that's an interesting story. <laughs> I don't have a CS degree in music, but when I was a kid, I kind of liked to play around with programming a little bit. I did like HTML and CSS. MySpace! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that was maybe a little bit after my time. I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 36, not quite as young as I seem, maybe. Oh, you were on them. I was on MySpace. You were on MySpace, yeah. don't lie to I was, me. I was one of the older ones on my own, anyway, whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was like making websites, you know, in the 90s, 2000s, and just static ones, didn't know JavaScript or anything. And then in college, I took one elective course in CS, which was like, I, it counted as a math credit. And it was like introduction to programming, basically, so it's like Java. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. But I was already halfway on the way to a music degree, so I just kind of let it be. But then it kept getting the itch. And so after college, I looked at Python and Ruby. And I was like, these are cool languages. I want to learn more languages. And then it was like Haskell. And then it came to Clojure. Did you just casually mention ca Haskell? I was like, I just, just picked it up. I got a <laughs> random interest in Haskell. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't do anything significant in Haskell, but it was, my, uh, it was how I dipped my toes into functional programming. Oh yeah, okay, have you seen that? I think it's a visual, it's a meme that goes around that it's like, you have to have seen this. Different programming languages as different like music music genres. Oh, oh. that sounds cool. It's pretty cool and it <laughs> says that uh, like Lisp languages, for example, are like black metal that nobody really gets it. Like, okay, weird uh, kids, it's black obscure metal. black metal. Yeah. And uh, Haskell is like jazz. It's oh, the, the, you know, yeah. very technical. If you get it, you get it, but That's it's very, comparison. yeah, very advanced. So like. How does that feel to you? And then what most influences Alda and, and why? Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so I think Haskell is obviously very technical. You have to, there's a lot you have to understand. It's very academic, which maybe is why I didn't quite stick with it that, that long. The functional programming part's definitely like captured my interest. And I feel like that part is pretty easy to learn, actually. I don't think Haskell needs to be intimidating. Okay, if you're interested in Haskell, go learn it. Learn You a Haskell is a really good book. That's what I read to, to learn the basics of it. I don't think I've read all of it because at a certain point, there's just too many it, concepts to fit in your head. I've basically never finished a book, so <laughs> there started a lot of them. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, so Haskell kind of primed the pump for me for closure because by the time I found closure, I already understood the ideas of not mutating stuff and like map and filter and reduce. It's all there. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally understand that. Ooh. I have a question. So have you had a switch to like the significance of doing improv over giant steps? The, oh. the, the Coltrane giant steps. Uh -huh. What do you feel is the 
programming equivalent of that as somebody who has spent time in both spaces? Wow, that's an interesting question. I'm sorry, that uh, was a curveball. Yeah, no. So for, con for context, for those of you who aren't familiar with Giant Steps, it's like John Coltrane, and it's the changes are just very fast and they're very unusual. They do kind of make a logical sense, like they're moving in third, major thirds, or I think major thirds. I actually am not that much of a jazz head. I don't know that much about I, it. I think it was his exploration into the circle of fifths is oh, that, okay. and so he, he goes around, like if you look, I, there's a visual that I'm thinking of in my head that almost, looks, not a pentagram, but it's- Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because it changes so, so often, and so quickly, it's really hard to improv over. And so I've heard that there's yeah. this big, like, if you can improv over giant steps, you got- Yeah, you're you really got, good. You jazz got person. jazz cloud. Yeah. So like, is that, oh, is that closure? Like doing- Oh, oh. I don't, I can't explain why, but I feel like just like Lisp in general, or maybe like SICP sort of like- Oh, maybe. sick P, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, yeah, if you can finish sick P, you basically- you can sick P, you're like <laughs> the guy who can improv, or the girl who can improv over giant steps, uh -huh. for sure. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I love sick pee. I finished sick pee. Did you finish sick pee? Uh, yeah, I totally finished sick pee. Awesome. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But the part that I did read was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because personally, I don't have a math or academic background at all, but it's crazy in these books. It's almost like they present the math and then they just explain it. Yeah. And so if you just read the explanation, pick up what they're putting down, that's, that's my favorite way. And the parts that I don't understand, I think I got this kind of from, you can put them in a black box and just abstract. I don't need to understand every single part of the problem. Yeah. But okay, let's talk more about Alda though. Okay. What was the catalyst to develop Alda? That's a funny story. Like I was, so before I became a software developer, I was, of all things, a disability examiner for social security. I did that for six years. It was a state government job and I wrote oh. medical records and I talked to people on the phone and basically saw if they determined whether they apply, uh, qualified for social security disability. And like, I got some things out of that job. I don't regret having done it. I learned how to deal with customers. I learned a lot about medicine and psychology, but I don't know, to, to make a long story short, that wasn't really the place for me. I wanted to do something different. But while I was there, I was at a place where I was getting all the work done by about halfway through the day, but I was still required to be there for the full eight hours. So I was like, oh, I just, I want to do something with my brain. I want to maybe write music or something, but I can't just have the big pad of sheet music on my desk, like obviously writing music while I'm supposed to be working. But what could I do? So I, I just had this weird, like brainstorming, storming moment where I was like, what if I could write it in like a text file? I could have like notepad.exe up on my other monitor and just be like sketching stuff out in text. That was where the idea came from. Okay, so who is Alda, what is like the target demographic for who you think can get the most out of the tool that she created? I think there's sort of two groups. There's programmers who maybe don't have as much background in music, but they like music, they want to create music. Maybe they want to explore music theory and learn about the concepts that way, but they don't want to have to learn a musical instrument to do that. So you can use Alda for that. And then the other one would be musicians who want to explore programming and create music with a computer. Oh, wow, so Bridge is those right now. Would you say that it makes, I guess, communication between those two groups uh, facilitates it being accessible? So if you have a group of people and not like I would know, all of your friends do music and for some, and you never learned it, could they jam or collaborate on something musical? Does, does Alda facilitate that? I hope so. I haven't done anything like that before, but I think, yeah, maybe. I think uh, if, yeah, it's an interesting, it's interesting to think about like, Somebody who's confident in Alda, bringing like a, a Bluetooth speaker connected to their laptop and like showing up with some people who are playing music and coding some stuff up on the fly. Yeah. I don't know if Alda, I, again, I've never tried it, but that'd be a good aspiration, I think, mm. for Alda. Mm. Okay. Do you think the experience, and I know that this is kind of your baby, so you're a little biased, but who do you think the experience is better for? The person with because honestly, as a person that doesn't play any music and does do a lot of programming, that it'd be so, I'd like just the joy that I would get from them. So that's part of the experience. The joy I would get would be so exciting. And then the people that, that from already have this familiarity with music, like from that side, 
who do you think benefit? Like, who do you think is going to be more happy? Is that? Yeah. Is, is it cheating if I say they're both great avenues? To I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, it's just, yeah. That created all I actually didn't have much of a programming background. I learned all this stuff after I was already a musician. So that was, I think, part of it. Like going back a little ways further, when I was in college and not at all pro knowledgeable about programming, I just discovered that music programming languages are a thing. And in particular, there's this one called MML, Music Macro Language, that if you ever had a flip phone where you could program little ringtones, that was the language for that. But they also used it for Nintendo Entertainment System music and other things. So I found out about that and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Let me try this. And I was fascinated because I didn't know how to program, but here I could write a program essentially that makes music. Yeah, that's that. when I, I've interacted with like Fruity Loops and things like that. And I end up just getting kind of like irritated and I'm like, can't I just program this into a, a loop, please? I get irritated because I know a loop when I say it. I know it's possible if I'm already working through this programming interface. I know it's possible to throw this on a loop, you yeah. know, and not have to interact with the GUI, I guess, is the, because, you know, yeah. they have the living mechanism there, but like to not have to press the button to do it, I can just, right. you know. Frustration uh, with GUIs was a big, another big part of Alda, is I had used graphical she music programs in college in my composition classes, and it was fine. There's, they're, they're good programs. Sibelius and Finale are both really good, but... If you have like a programmer's mind and you identify abstractions and like the boxes around things like, oh, this is, this is my motif. Now I want to repeat that and transpose it up a, a step or whatever. You have to do that manually in a GUI application. That's kind of frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use Emacs by any chance? No, I'm a Vim person actually. Uh, I don't know if, I'm not sure if Vim has a, um, like in Emacs you can create these macros of I'm doing this thing and you can just attach it to you can create a macro real quick. Bam, 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 and get it done. Does Vim oh, yeah. kind of have a similar? Oh, yeah. Vim has a really good macro system. It's more about, I don't know if it's similar or different to Emacs ones, but like you record a series of keystrokes, essentially. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So is Alda an open source project? Are there any to-dos? If somebody's hearing this podcast, oh, my God, that's exactly what I need. How do you suggest they get involved in? Does it any outlying to do's and how to contact you? Can you share with us a little about that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that. Uh, glad you asked that. So it's free and open source. Will always be free and open source. I love collaborating with people. It's mainly a one man show, which I think makes sense. I have the most context on the thing, but every now and then I get some contributions, and it's I really enjoy talking to people, collaborating. So if this interests you, you can check it out on GitHub. There's the official website also alda.io that has like links to the GitHub. And there's a bunch of open issues or, uh, oh, there's also a Slack group, which can maybe be a good, good place to jump in and say, hey, at Dave, uh, you know, what do you need help with right now? And offhand, I know that documentation is a big thing that could use improvement. So if anyone really likes documentation, please talk to me. Yeah. And so this is a Slack channel within the Clojurian Slack? No, or it's a dedicated. The, the dedicated, Slack. oh, same thing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And that is A-L-D-A dot I-O is the kind of. That's the, right. What's that? All right. Awesome. Well, any more thoughts that you'd like to share? Any, anything that you burn in that you'd like to get off your chest? Just that Strange Loop is a really awesome conference. And my favorite talks are the ones that are creative oriented. There's always at least two or three. Yeah. Anything involving art of any kind, music, dance, poetry, being generated by programs is super fascinating. Yes. Last year, that talk about the woman with co during COVID that the created a dance partner. Yeah. She generated a dance partner. Ariel Petty, Dancing With Myself. Yes. Awesome talk. <laughs> awesome talk. And yeah, I totally agree. I love, that's why I love Strange Roof so much is the, you know, it's the people. Um, sure. So with that being said, everything will be linked in the description, wherever this is posted. And it was really good talking to you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks. This is fun.